Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear members of the Horasis Visions community, I welcome you to the 2022 Horasis Global Meeting. I'm joined by Lino Tseka, Chairman of Peter Group Malaysia. Peter Group is acting as strategic partner of the event. I will call on Vinod in a minute. Under the theme toward a new era of peace and sustainability, 600 of the most senior members of the Horasis Visions community are offered the opportunity to devise novel ideas to navigate through our developments in post-COVID and post-invasion times. The need for sustainability has become very visible. The world sees how local communities have been devastated by fires, floods and famines. And in parallel, the devastation caused by the COVID pandemic. The invasion of Ukraine and war crimes will affect for years to come. The meeting, ladies and gentlemen, will discuss how to move forward, becoming more adventurous, innovative and entrepreneurial through rapidly engaging in a new area of sustainability and peace. By embracing new technologies and social change, we will aid the pandemic recovery, counteract climate change, and build a better future for work through compassionate leadership at all levels. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my great pleasure to call on Vino Tseka. Peter Group is one of the fastest growing conglomerates in Southeast Asia. Vinod, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Frank, and, uh, and welcome, everyone. Um, I'm so glad and I'm honored to be here, as usual. Um, um, it's, uh, it's an important platform uh, that Orasis has created, uh, especially now, when people need to come together and start, start not just talking, but perhaps acting in unison on major subjects. Um, your theme this year, you know, is is says it all, right? Sustainability and peace. Um, the post pandemic uh, has given us challenges. However, the pandemic has taught us lessons that should make us now um, open to new models to meet the challenges we face uh, and to overcome some of the uh, potholes we found that the pandemic showed that we had weaknesses um, that we had uh, in society uh, in our economies uh, I don't I'm not sure if we can call it post invasion the invasion continues in in Ukraine um, and I suppose that sort of uh, brings to stark reality the dangers we face in a world that is still unequitable in a world that still has the haves and have nots at extremes and where power plays still play a major role in how we operate. Now that's a different problem. I think what we need to do now is to focus on what I call social capitalism. Um, we need to find sustainable solutions for wealth creation. And when I say, and when we talk about sustainability, you're right to say that, you know, the devastations we faced, even in Malaysia, which is a modern country, that we've had flood situations within the capital city that we've never seen before, where thousands of people were made homeless uh, and many lost their, their belongings, uh, their lifelong belongings uh, and their livelihoods. Uh, and this happens continuously in many other countries, especially third world countries, whether it's Bangladesh or, or other, other, other nations. But it cannot be just about the environment. Sustainability has to be about both the environment and the people. We have to find holistic solutions going forward. And we need these great thinkers, people that are part of this conference and everyone else, uh, whether they're dealing with, uh, you know, climate change focused on carbon uh, emissions or whether they're dealing with uh, human rights, whether they're dealing with poverty eradication. We need these people to come together and find solutions that are holistic because no solution will work if it just focuses on climate change and the environment. And you can't deal with poverty and eradication of poverty if you don't deal with the issues of the climate and the environment as well. So we need these two sides to come together. And with them, we need economic leaders. We need the business community to step up and realize their a critical part of the solution. 
Because let's be honest, if businessmen buy in, if business women buy in, if business leaders buy into something and they commit themselves to something, the world generally follows. That's that's how it works. Um, uh, and uh, I think that's what we have to do now. And I, I, and I very much hope um, that the pandemic has shown the need for for economic leaders to stand up and be counted. Uh, they can no longer sit back and say they're not part of societal development. You know, they pay taxes and that's it. You know, politicians and others are responsible for society. Um, that cannot be the case. We make money off society. We make money off a community. Uh, it now makes sense that we also have to play a part in ensuring that community thrives, that a community is healthy and that community grows. Because a healthy, thriving, and growing community means more money for us. So it's a, it's a selfish thing, but it works on all sides. But it's a reality we must now face. You're absolutely right, uh, Binot, and um, you know, we need to really look into a holistic approach of bringing all leaders together from business, government, and civil society uh, to overcome the devastation. Uh, you mentioned before, of course, uh, the COVID devastation, climate change, uh, and the invasion and uh, finding new solutions. Only then, I think, we can overcome those challenges. Do you think we are facing the end of globalization, Binot, or uh, will it all you know, be as before? I, I don't think anything will ever be as before. And I think globalization, let's, let's take it from a word. People have either very tremendous distaste for that word, globalization, or are completely sold and bought into the idea of globalization. And I think it's misunderstood. We cannot treat every country the same. We have to have a handicap system for the world. We cannot treat Bangladesh the same way we treat the US. We cannot treat Japan the same way as we treat Liberia or Malawi. You know, the economic, socioeconomic um, position of those countries are different. What they can achieve, what they can do, and what they can commit to is different from other countries. Um, Malaysia may have the most ancient rainforest in the world. And so we should try and secure it and save it. Many have said it's the, it's the lungs of the world. So if it's the lungs of the world, other countries should also commit to what's financing it, paying rent. Because let's be honest, the West has very devastated their environment. All their woods are gone, all their trees are gone. But that's how they became rich. That's how they became wealthy. Now you have the East, you have the, the, the third world that is now rising and want to use their resources, but they're being told, hang on, you can't. We need the trees. We need the green. We, 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 ha we, you know, we have a problem with climate change. And they're right. We have to do that. But surely there's a price to pay. There's a sharing of cost that has to be made. So I think a handicap system that gives every country a handicap, like golf, an <laughs> equalizer. So yeah. when, they say, when they deal with each other, there is some sort of compensation. There is a balance in everything. Then globalization works. It cannot be a free-for-all globalization. We have to take into account socioeconomic situations for each country. It's a great leitmotif you're giving, me, not. I think that's um, a great theme for the whole summit. And uh, you're right. You know, there are sometimes double standards in the world comparing developed countries with emerging countries. And uh, the end shouldn't just... Um, define you know the means uh, we are going to use um, and i think we have to overcome uh, the thinking and maybe be more altruistic in what we do well uh, I don't call it tempering greed i mean it's just tempering greed we we don't have to wear a hair shirt business leaders don't we, we don't have to sacrifice huge amounts we're just talking about tempering greed and balancing the and for the long term we come out better we come out stronger and we come out richer Exactly. It's a win-win scenario for everybody. And, uh, you know, thank you so much uh, for this enlightening words. I know you are also hosting uh, a forum, a very important forum in the future on social capitalism and social capitalism might be the way out. Uh, so thanks for the great contribution. Um, I'm now inviting everybody to join the opening plenary and uh, Vinod will speak in the plenary right after about social capitalism. Thanks so much, Vinod, and see you in a minute again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.